hello. Yes, you are. Yeah, it's another Sunday night, and we love to come into your home, mm -hmm. fellow Ghanaians. You know, this is the Upside Down Show. My name is Freeman Dujami. And mine is Nana Tufu. As usual, we serve you what you want to know, what you need to know, and of course, all the infotainment right here on this show. So stay with us. We'll be right back. And of course, we'll kick the ball over. Coming up on the Upside Down Show, we have a conversation with Member of Parliament for Tamale Central Constituency and former Deputy Minister of Trade and Information, Ibrahim Mutala Mohammed. He speaks about life, politics and religion on the show. City TV is live on DSTV. Go to channel 363. On Go TV, access City TV on channel 182. On a digital TV, Please press the menu button on the remote control and run a new search on your TV. Take note that without an antenna, you cannot access City TV on your television. City TV can be accessed on a free-to-air digital box like the Go TV and Star Times box. City TV, it's your world. Welcome back. This is the Upside Down Show on City TV. Now, I always love it, you know, when we have to talk to politicians because it looks like all the problems we have in this country, we put them at your doorstep. Yep. Yes, if there's no light, it's a politician. In fact, if your boyfriend or your husband breaks your heart, you can easily blame your MP for that, you know, because the system is I mean, tight. If, if he had fixed the road, your boyfriend won't find it difficult coming to visit Probably you. Probably he was so, coming yeah. to you and his tie got bust and, you know, and say it eventually. Blame it on the again. politician. We can blame the politician blame for the everything. Politician. If you can't pay your children's school fees, it's the responsibility of the politician. Find your MP, you know. Yeah. Anytime you have issues, mm -hmm. deal with your MP. Yeah, but you don't behind all that <laughs> big name politician honorable Charlie there are human beings behind that no but do you yeah. realize that this gentleman that we are going to talk to mm -hmm. okay now watching him from afar I had my own kind of yeah. you know um yeah, I mean, when you see them you, you, yeah. you are, you're able to draw your own perceptions yeah, about yeah, them, and I, had my own, I mean this one in uh -huh. particular when mm -hmm. I watch him on TV when I listen to him I had my own reservations yeah. about him like this guy that's what the true known crowd yeah. you know? but <laughs> when I met him and I spoke to him I was like okay mm -hmm. yeah. I think there's yeah. a human side a human behind to it this all. you know yeah. and then I felt like okay so we would love to know more mm -hmm. yeah. about him and that is why we are bringing him here on yep, Upside yep, Down yep, yep, to yep, know yep, when yep. he's not <laughs> talking plain and when he's not, uh -huh. you know, busting people yeah. and all that, who he really is. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please help us welcome our guest for the night, the Honorable <laughs> Motala Mohammed. Honorable, <laughs> 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 honorable. Ah. Right, oh, right, right. I didn't know you consider me to be too <laughs> <laughs> no. well, well, it, it comes with so, it. I mean, sometimes so, I wonder if it's a cloak you, you guys wear when you become politicians or not. You know, so, 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 um, I mean, earlier, you know, people like yourself, Mm -hmm. Okujetua Blackwa, yeah. Sam George, mm -hmm. Phyllis Ofosukwache, yeah. you know, some kind of squad, I was like, hey, what do they want? <laughs> what do they want? <laughs> you know, <laughs> I think that you guys are really cool, you know, Sam George yeah. is very cool. Yes. Um, yeah, he, he was Sammy, here yeah, a few weeks back. Sammy is yes. cool. Okay. Yes. Well, we are left with Ofosukwache to justify yeah. Yeah. <laughs> his, his inclusion to the, we are cool people. We are, we are very delighted to have you. Welcome mm -hmm. to um, Upside Down. I'm humbled. Mm -hmm. And I, you I, look I, good. Exactly, I was going um, to talk about thank it. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, oh, I love wow. this. Maybe I should okay. get one myself. Okay, I, I will. In fact, you I got should. it from Tamale. Oh, oh nice. 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 From nice, my nice. constituency. It's necessary. It's necessary. Well, the hat. It's just that for me, when I wear the hat, because of the sakura, it becomes yes. slippery. It keeps falling off. <laughs> we'll find one that fits you. The Honorable, so, I mean, just as we said in our introduction, you know, a lot of people watch you mm. on TV. Yeah. A lot of people listen to you on radio or probably something you've written online. Yeah. And you are always kind of, you know, you look that serious. You look like yes. always kind of, you know, attacking. I'm sure mm -hmm. when uh, the government is bringing out policies, they think like about people like you, yeah. you know, that, <laughs> these guys. But I'm sure that you are also a husband. You are a father. A father. Yes. And you are not a politician at home. You know, mm -hmm. you have friends. I mean, when I spoke with you of set you know i i felt that so it changed my, my perception the home is government you know she's the boss there exactly <laughs> you know, but when i communicated with you i realized that okay 
so I may be wrong yeah. in a way. Yeah. He's really a cool guy. Yeah, so we is. would want to know more about you. Mm -hmm. Who is Ibrahim Mutala Mohammed, mm -hmm. you know, MP for Tamale Central? Yeah. Well, Ibrahim Mutala Mohammed, I am an ordner. I am partly Gonja, partly the Gumba. Okay. My dad of blessed memory was the Gumba. My mom, half Gonja, half the Gumba. I'm a royal. Okay. Mm. My dad was also an imam, a sheikh, a businessman, oh. and a farmer. My okay. mom was a businessman, a businesswoman. A business woman, yeah. Sorry, yeah. and uh, I came from a very huge family. Mm -hmm. My dad had four wives, mm. okay. and my mom was the last wife. Oh wow! <laughs> and uh, those of us alive after mm. my dad. My dad passed in, in the year two thousand. Mm -hmm. How many children did he have? Uh, those of us alive after my dad passed was uh, were twenty three. Wow. Unfortunately, we lost one of our brothers. Mm -hmm. May Allah sure. peace and mercy be on upon him. Mm -hmm. So I, I was, I think I am third to last. Wow. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine. So you're number like 19? Yes, number, or yes, number 19. 19. <laughs> wow. Yes, I'm older than I think. <laughs> let me say, I'm older than about yesterday. <laughs> my dad my dad passed when he was nine. Is it safe to say you were a pension baby? <laughs> 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 it's safe. Yeah. M many many had predicted that myself and my kid brothers that would grieve very early because my dad gave birth to us when he was completely grey. Mm. Wow. You know, northern men are so strong. Very strong. Even at very the age strong. Of, <laughs> and my dad died at the age of ninety seven. Oh, you know, wow. he, my mom was a businesswoman. In fact, our entire family mm. we were all into business. My dad, my mm. mom. And the four wives were all in the same compound, actually. My dad's room, the first wife, second wife, third wife, my mom's And there was room no was, confusion? No. Actually, we, we, are even, we were closer to our stepmoms and our stepbrothers and sisters than wow. our direct brothers. Anytime you come to the house in the night, you hardly will find me in my mom's room. I'll mm -hmm. be in my stepmom's room. You go to my mom's room, you find my stepbrothers or stepsisters. Mm. You know, and we are communal in nature, mm. and that was also so helping. The way we're eating, we're eating in, in, in silos. Mm -hmm. You find these year groups. You eat, <laughs> okay. you, you eat around. Yeah, you're, you're, you're you sit around. According to yes, and we're <laughs> eating in the compound. You, you know, in the north, you sit. We yeah. eat around one bowl yeah. mm. in that order. Like a restaurant. And, and every yeah. woman will cook. This woman, the first woman, will cook for two days. The two mm. days, he is... I mean, she she's, con in she's in charge. Yeah. For everybody. Yes, for everybody. So you're like, you're so cooking she, for like... E exactly. I mean, the basin was something. was huge. <laughs> so if this woman is cooking today, she is for the man. For, oh, for, yeah. for two days. Okay. Yeah, for but two days. the same woman was a business woman. So how yes. was she yeah, the combining the work? Inter the cooking, interesting. Maybe in the and of course, <laughs> the marital duties. In the course of time, I would explain. <laughs> so if this woman cook for two days... Mm -hmm. Then after that, the second woman cook mm. for two days. After that, the third woman cook for two days. After that, the fourth, the fourth woman cook for two days. Of right. course, the cooking was done in the. No, your and, father was a happy man. And me, yeah. very. Okay. And me, me, the, the, <laughs> interesting, long. <laughs> the interesting aspect of it was that yeah. my mom, my mom kids, we are four. Mm -hmm. I have a senior sister, I have a kid brother, and a kid sister. Okay. Mm. None of them was with my mom. My senior sister was with our auntie. Those days, you have to give one of your children to your yeah. sisters. Okay. And in fact, the house, my auntie's house was just, this is the house of mm. my father's house. Mm. But okay. she could not come to her house. She was working for my auntie. Wow. My kid brother was with my uncle. My kid sister was with my grandmother, my mom's grandmother, who was very old. So I was the only person with my mom. Oh, wow. So I was doing the cooking. Oh, wow. <laughs> in, in, in the morning, in the morning, my mom used to sell some items in the market, mm -hmm. you know, some of these uh, cosmetics. Okay. Right. So in the morning... My mom would, would get some of the things for me. I'll put it on my head and go around and sell. Mm. Oh, before I come stuff. back, before I come back to take my bath and go to school. Oh. So I go to school. That time, water was a huge problem, a mm -hmm. challenge yeah. in mm -hmm. Tamale. So from school, I attended Kulkul school. Okay. Right. One of the, the most deprived side two schools. <laughs> <laughs> and interestingly, Honorable Harun Idris and I attended the same school. Oh, no, okay. then, then I hope Kulukul <laughs> school is not as it was. It's, it's, a, it's a side two school. Mm -hmm. and but so have you done but have you, What have you people it? done? For oh, yes. It, it, it has actually improved. In mm. fact, recently there was some you know storm. I went there and provided mm. some items. I intend to do a lot. Because when I was an MP, I wasn't an MP for Tamale Center, mm -hmm. I was in Nantong. Mm -hmm. So the full course was on. Yeah, right. So from school, I get home, I would have to go and fetch water to fill the basin. In fact, there was a, there's a place called Bilpiala. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is almost about minimum five kilometers from my home. Mm -hmm. okay. I would go there about ten times to fill the basin. After that, then I would go to the mar market. We all, I mean, we brought up in a business yeah. family. I would go there, 
the day it was for my mom's cooking. Mm -hmm. So I will go there by three, I will get back home, mm -hmm. sweep the compound, start the preparation before my mom comes. Oh, wow. So in the night when my colleagues were going out to play, yeah. I would wait till everybody finished eating. The entire compound, the mm -hmm. entire house, I wash everything before I go out to play. So I was virtually yeah. doing no, that. That sounds so like what? That, that, you were that, playing after 8 p.m.? Yes, yes, after 8 p.m. <laughs> because you see, my, my, I was wow. the only child. So I was working, what, and my stepmoms, yeah. they have daughters. Mm. So the daughters so were, by me, I was compelled. So I was wow. very, very close with my mom. Very, yeah, very close. And I, everybody knows. If you check my, my DPs, myself and my mom. Mm. Oh, wow. And it's been, it's been so since 2015. I lost my mom in 2015. As a matter of fact, wow. I built a house for my mom oh, wow. before I contemplated building my own house. Amazing. Wow. So when I started working funny, and yeah. making money, the yeah. first thing I did was that. Do you cook I, for your wife now? Sometimes my wife doesn't believe my cooking. <laughs> and I she tell you that no, I won't eat and run. You know, I, 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 what I, I, I felt. In fact, I still feel I haven't done much mm. for my mom. Mm. When I built a house for my mom as a Muslim woman, I sent her to Hajj. Mm. I mean, that's what every Muslim. Yeah. And unfortunately, my mom died in 2015. It was so hateful. Oh. I tell people that nothing hurts so much mm, than yeah. losing your mom. And yeah. those who have lost their wives mm. will tell you that losing your wife is more hurtful. So basically, you can basically yeah. I, I am from a very huge family. Okay. And the way we were, the way we were brought mm. up, and it's not only in our home, many mm. homes mm. across the north, mm. everything you achieve in life, you achieve it collectively. Yeah. Okay. And I say so because when I was in school, you sit down, your cousin, your auntie will call, oh, Mutala, take this milk. Mm -hmm. You are going to school. Mm -hmm. Take this. Sometimes they give you money, yeah. even when you don't request for. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when you attain anything in life, you should always be mindful be of the fact the that family. several people contributed yeah. towards making you who exactly. you are. So you have a huge responsibility. responsibility. You yeah. come to parliament, and I will give you a, 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 a task. Just come to parliament and go the offices of the northern MPs mm -hmm. and juxtapose that with our colleagues from the south. <laughs> you find people all the time yeah. mm. because we are communal in nature. Yeah. Maybe okay. because of the economic challenges, mm -hmm. mind you, the five northern regions are the most deprived right, yeah. you know, regions. Yeah. So the communal nature actually mm -hmm. helped. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons, the rationale behind marrying a lot of wives and having a huge families in those days was to have more hands working for you in the in farm. The farm. Mm. Yeah. Islam, you know, coincidentally has you know, agreed with some of our practices. practices mm. yeah. Because uh, there is always misinterpretation of the Quranic verses. You hear people say, oh, Islam says marry four. four. No. There is a Quranic ayah. Okay. Mm. Muslims are guided by two things. Mm -hmm. Quran is, Quran, whatever in the Quran are the direct words of Allah okay. or God. Okay. okay. We have what we call Hadith. Hadith is the sayings of the whole prophet. Mm -hmm. And Sunnah is his practices. Mm. The Quran says that marry two if you can be fair and just between them. Okay. So it comes with some condition. Exactly. Mm. Marry three if you can be fair and just among them. Mm -hmm. mm. Marry four if you can be fair and just among them. But it doesn't even stop there. But if you know you can't, mm -hmm. stick to one. Mm. So okay. in terms of sticking to one, mm. is clearly stated in the Quran. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and I tell to meet these uh, Yes, but if you can. And, I tell, can and okay. I tell my friends who are Christians that I have read the Bible at least from the first page mm. to the second page. Okay, Genesis That's to it. Revelation. I did, in fact, I took Bible knowledge as free elective. Okay. For one okay. year, I got A and A minus. What were you looking for? Semester. I <laughs> wanted to have an appreciation of the religion. When I came okay. to level 100, you know, Legon where level 100, they give you courses to yes, run. Yes. They give me philosophy, archaeology, study of religions and history. Mm. So I chose Bible knowledge as free elective. Mm. Because we in history, I did a lot of religions, Zoroastrianism, yeah. yeah. Bundism, Islam, yeah. Christianity. And for me, I needed to have a proper appreciation of mm. the Christi Christianity as a religion. Mm. I attended mission schools, I attended Methodist Methodist school school is a Methodist primary oh, okay. and okay. Methodist. No, we have to visit mm. this school school. And, and, yeah, yeah. and Methodist DHS. <laughs> so okay. I wanted to have, have an appreciation. Mm. Yeah. And I remember when I had discussions with my friends when we were in Ligon, I said, ah, I haven't seen anywhere in the Bible that says marry one. The Bible mm. talks contextually, you and your yes, wife. Exactly. So yeah. it, so can, it's be it's uh -huh, it yeah. can be understood. But our nature as Africans is to have, you know, such large families, to yeah. be very honest. But even in Islam, those who say Islam says marry for, no. It right. says that with some conditions. You mm. can marry a woman because of her beauty, okay. marry a woman because of her, her, her faith, faith, 
marry a woman because of her money. You can marry. Islam permits that. Oh, so these you, days, you know, these days yes, people yeah. go like, uh, why is the guy following the woman because mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. money? Oh, yes, that? Islam it's says it's allowed, it. guys. If, 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 if her economic condition mm. will support the family. Right. In fact, the whole prophet married, his first, wa first wife was Khadija. Yes. Khadija was 40 years, and the whole prophet was 25 when they married. You don't say so you Khadija was 15 years older oh. than the whole prophet. He was a sugar mommy. <laughs> well, <laughs> Khadija, well. Khadija and, and interestingly, Khadija was a wealthy businesswoman okay. in, in Mecca before mm -hmm. Islam. And he, she needed a very trustworthy person to mm. run, mm. you know, business her businesses. Mm. Yeah. And they told her that the most trustworthy person at that time in Mecca was Muhammad. Okay. So Prophet Muhammad was an employee of Khadija. Mm. Oh, wow. So he, she employed the whole Prophet to run her businesses. Her business. mm. And in the course of that, she fell in love. I mean, they they fell in love. In fact, when, when, the, when <laughs> Prophet Hood came to the holy Prophet, mm. the first person, you know, she went to Mount Hera, yeah. where Angel Gabriel you know, mm. shrouded them and said, read, read in the name of thy Lord, mm. your Lord who teaches man what he knows not. He was frightened. When he yeah. got home, Khadija said, no, your, your Lord will not abandon you. Yeah. And you know what Khadija did? Khadija's uncle, he was called Waraka bin Naufal. He was a Christian. Mm. Okay. So Khadija took the Holy Prophet to the uncle to tell him what he saw. And Waraka bin Naufal said, you have been predicted in the Bible to be the prophet who comes. No, we have to come to your <laughs> exactly. Islamic class. That means we have to come to for Islamic that. class. Let's <laughs> look at your interest in politics. Yes. Mm -hmm. Where did it start from? Yeah. Did you, um, your large yeah. family background, your influence, influence I mean, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. when you have different families, exactly. there's a bit of politics in, in the house and in the all home, that. Yeah. How did you develop interest in politics? My, my parents. Yes. I mean, if political party association was based on heritage, mm -hmm. I think that I would be our own MPP than a lot of their national executive office holders. Oh, are, you, are you serious? <laughs> My maternal grandfather, uh -huh. the Twelve Naya Kubo, yeah. was one of the founding fathers of the Buzid Anko tradition. You don't say? Yes, the Twelve Naya Kubo. In fact, <laughs> the current chief of Tolang, Major mm. Suleiman, yes, the former yes. you know, uh, secretary for security and the president yeah. Kufo, he's my direct uncle actually. So, I so and where did yeah, what are you doing in the end? And my, <laughs> my dad was a CPP man. Ah, and okay. my dad was a CPP. But no, you, you are Ghanaian. Yes. Yeah. You see, my, my problem, <laughs> frankly, all in growing up, my dad was politically conscious. Okay. Okay. My dad was working with one white man before independence. Mm. And any time Nkrumah visited the north, Nkrumah used to come to that person. So my dad had that affection for Nkrumah. Mm. Right. So in growing up, my dad appreciated the politics. And they were the CPP. Mm -hmm. You know, after mm -hmm. independence and command, mm -hmm. and, and uh, lawyer Ibrahim Mahama, who yeah. is a political mentor yeah. to many of us, including my senior mm -hmm. brother, Honorable Haruna Idrisu. So I, I, grew, I grew up being conscious of the Buzia Dankwa, you know, mm -hmm. see, yeah. tradition. tradition. But trust me, the more I read about the political history of this country, the more I distance myself from the Buzia Dankwa <laughs> tradition. Is that the same? There was something yeah. in there you didn't yeah. like? Well, what I maybe perhaps the mm. way we were brought up, we were brought up with that communal feeling. Uh -huh. And that is the core of socialism mm. or leftist political parties. Is you're looking at the redistribution of wealth for yeah. the need of the poor exactly. so that you ensure that you can have social equity. And I think that the CPP resonated mm -hmm. with that idea mm -hmm. than the Buzid Anko tradition, which is a center right, mm -hmm. yeah. which says that mm -hmm. capital, uh, you know, property owning. Mm -hmm. yeah. What we experience under this government is property <laughs> grabbing. You know, so, so on that basis, perhaps that could inform. Mm -hmm. And maybe perhaps because of my close ties with my father to and having an appreciation mm -hmm. of our politics, and maybe perhaps that could be the reason. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, my dad didn't like Rollins at all. So, 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 listen, your dad was CPP. Yes, my mom and, um, was, was MPP. NPP, MPP. Yeah. In fact, my grandfather. Okay, so why didn't you settle father. with N uh, CPP? My dad didn't like NDC. Uh -huh. My dad didn't like NDC because of the burning of the Tamale market. This was Santa Rollins. Yes, that was the 31st. Yes. Right. And I, like I, I told you earlier, my parents, my dad, my family were businessmen. Mm. Mm. And, okay, and so with, 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 yeah, with yeah. humility, I will tell you that maybe perhaps we didn't go through the challenges many northern homes i mean yeah. home was not bad yeah mm -hmm. to tell you the truth home was so good mm. because of mm. what our parents were and in 1981-82 yeah. the tamale market was bent down to ashes yeah. without any provocation mm. the military and this were some of the excesses of the 31st yeah. mm. i tell people that i don't participate in anything 31st 
and I have never participated in anything 31st yeah. and I will never participate in anything 31st mm -hmm. for two reasons. One, I think that the overthrow of Nkrumah in 1966 was criminal. Mm -hmm. So if I condemned the overthrow of Nkrumah, who was a democratically elected government, mm -hmm. it would be hypocritical for me to be defending yeah. the overthrow of Liman. Mm -hmm. Liman. Mm -hmm. Liman was also democratically elected. So if I say that the overthrow of Nkrumah in 1966 and the truncation of our democratic process was criminal mm -hmm. and illegal, then I should say same on the 31st. So right. I have never. And let me also admit that perhaps the burning of the Tamale market Marketing, was also yeah. a factor mm -hmm. as a result of the 31st. Mm -hmm. I participated in June 4th. Okay. Rawlings was the motivation mm -hmm. why I joined NDC to tell mm -hmm. you the truth. Yeah. But there is there is one thing about the people of the North and the NDC. Mm -hmm. If you understand the economic circumstances before Rawlings, mm -hmm. you would understand why people, a lot of Northerners, you know, resonated with, with Rawlings and the NDC. I remember in the North, they give you lies by 9 o'clock, lies is out. There wasn't water. Mm -hmm. I explained by telling yeah. us a little boy the distances. Mm -hmm. so you have to go to water. And Rawlings provided water. Rawlings provided it with electricity, mm -hmm. massive mm -hmm. infrastructure development. Mm -hmm. So it would have been hypocritical if we didn't agree with Rawlings. Mm -hmm. So I weighed between my family head, mm -hmm. that is the burning of the market, mm -hmm. and the collective interest mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. the so society I lived in. And I guess that drove me towards, mm. you know, NDC. Yeah, so Rawlings right. inspired me, even okay. though I disagreed with the burning of the But, but you market. come from a business background. Mm. Yeah. I mean, look at what your parents were doing. Yeah. You are also a trained teacher. Mm -hmm. Yes, my profession. Why did you decide, you know, to go into politics, mm -hmm. you know, strict <laughs> politics, yeah. come to parliament? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, think, I think maybe it's just, it's just, I don't know, maybe, interestingly, a lot of us young people mm -hmm. in the politics today, mm -hmm have been student leaders. Uh, okay. From Ghana school, mm. I went to Tamale Teacher Training College okay. where I was trained as a teacher. Mm. Then I went to Legon, okay. you know, where the last badge to write the university the entrance, entrance exam. exams. Oh, okay. Right from, in fact, Ghana school, I was a student leader. Tatko, okay. I was in Kuruma House Perfect. Okay. Maybe perhaps that also motivated me in joining I'm sure. and loving in Kuruma. <laughs> I'm an Nkuruma yeah. actually. <laughs> so from there, Legon, First year, I was elected a Congress member. Okay. I was elected alongside Shamima, Muslim. Shamima oh, okay. was then with uh, oh. Volta Hall. We were all Shamima, Samson Ladi. Okay. Bernard, Bernard was Amen. my junior. Okay. Very, right. Many people don't know Bernard got a first class in economics. No, I mean Bernard. Oh, yeah. yes, Bernard. Bernard. Yeah. He is Bernard. I, 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 so, debated, yeah. <laughs> I debated him and he will admit I won actually. <laughs> no, we, no. We Wait, formed did you win or he would have to admit? You no, won? he would have to admit <laughs> now because the reason is that mm -hmm. I remember we had a debating club in Legon Hall. Yeah. It was on the U.S. invasion. In fact, mm. U.S. criminal invasion of Iraq. I was against the invasion mm. in the he debate. Was he was for. And mm. I was the lead, you know, debater on that. He yeah. was. It was hot. I mean, intellectual display. Of and those you things. Like are, you enjoyed those it. things oh, <laughs> we, we did. So several years after that, mm. it, it, it became very clear that the U.S. didn't have any justification in mm. invading Iraq. It was as a result of pact of lies. Mm. So I think that Bernard from Hansard would today admit that I won the debate because <laughs> I have been vindicated. But then on that day, he well, won. We, we, we oh no, he honestly, <laughs> Bernard was my Bernard, Bernard was was my junior. Mm. He was even though I had no doubt at all about his his intellectual capacity. Mm. Some of us perhaps were made politicians, and that's why <laughs> he's not. Into but maybe politics. with all that is going on now, we can pitch you against him oh, for yeah. another debate. Well, I think it, we would it, love to have that yeah. debate. And oh yes, no, no, he would admit that he 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 have won because it is very clear. And he will admit today that <laughs> if he knew that that events were going to turn turn this out way, the way, yeah. he would have support. No, but, but, but you see, Bernard is not we too support. far away. <laughs> and we are also very much yeah, around. No so problem. We will arrange for exactly. that. No problem. But, but let's look at... Uh, so from Legon, from yeah. Legon, I went to KNUST. Mm -hmm. I did my first master's in planning. Okay. So from psychology to planning. Mm. Okay. I was a teaching assistant actually at the psychology department. Mm. Right. Then from tech, I did another course in the US, mm. which was f sponsored by the World Bank mm. and in development studies. So from there, yeah. I came back. Then I did another master's mm -hmm. in legal and international relations mm -hmm. and diplomatic practice. Mm -hmm. Some says that I'm not a diplomat, <laughs> but at least I did. <laughs> of course, I wouldn't let Dampari to write the. <laughs> and I knew you were definitely oh, going to know the way you mentioned my, diplomacy. My experience and understanding <laughs> of, of diplomacy. The, the Geneva Convention of Diplomatic Relations. But so would you agree to what the ambassador did? 
what di what did she do that is wrong mm. absolutely nothing wrong that statement that letter written by dampari was so reckless very irresponsible mm. and to be very honest i want to believe that he never uttered those words but because got knowing his that he's got his signature so as far as well, we are concerned uh, but in this, in this country when malamisa was was dismissed mm. Mal, there was a statement issued and signed by malamisa several years later malamisa granted interview and said that he never wrote those statements. We'll wait for that several, <laughs> this several thing, years I believe, to come. I, look, for I'm all you know, okay, we even cannot if, contribute to the speculation. Even if it yes. wasn't IGP, yeah. can I ask you a simple it? question? Uh huh. The minute the IGP works under the authority of the Minister of Interior. Interior. Uh -huh. Yeah. Now, in diplomatic relations, uh -huh. are you then telling me uh -huh. that the Minister of Interior was unaware of the letter written to the British High Commission? And are you then also telling me uh -huh. that if the Minister of Interior were to be aware? They wouldn't cross check with the Minister of Foreign Affairs before that letter was it. Come on. I mean let's get let's get serious. There is no way anyone would tell me that that letter was written, you know, absolutely without the the understanding and the oh, approval no, that of is this for minister. But anyway, let's talk. I mean, I mean, that is debatable. What we know is that there was a tweet. There's a letter assigned by Dampari. Yeah. So, 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 let, let so let's let me, leave let me, that. Let me, that. So from, yes. Ken, from, from when I came back mm -hmm. after so after after KNUST, then I went to do that other course. I came back and did another master. Why so many different courses? In international relations. Then I did law. Actually, I did law after the international relations. I did law, and by last will, I am in my final year at the political science department mm. of university of ghana doing my phd okay. wow. and Doctor by unless will <laughs> by unless will i should finish my everything in october and hopefully mm -hmm. you know barring any hiccups and any mm. unfortunate incidences i should be graduating this year for my phd in political science you will graduate. i intend i intend to do the llm when i did the llb mm. i didn't go to makwala i didn't even write yeah. the exams I intend to do the LLM after the PhD next mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. And my understanding is that Legon will now run it one year. Okay. Okay. The view is that if I have LLB, LLM and a PhD in political mm -hmm. science, I can teach in any faculty of law. So that is basically uh, mm -hmm. what I want to do. I, nothing pleases me than teaching. Do you want well, to be a president a someday? Teacher. President? Yes, mm -hmm. of Ghana someday. Well, as a Muslim, uh, there is a hadith. Uh -huh. I told you what yeah. hadith is. Uh, and the Holy Prophet said that Anna Hashim Wallahu al Morty, that man proposes and God, God disposes. disposes. My life, I believe that is predestined. Both Islam and Christianity believe mm -hmm. in yeah. predestination. I don't want to say I want to be a president or not be a president. It's only Allah who determines that. If that Allah asks you. What yeah. I engage in now, the unfortunate thing is that. Allah doesn't talk to us this day. Who said? God doesn't talk to us this <laughs> day. Maybe you are not availing yourself. Maybe you are not availing yourself to sometimes, be talked to. Sometimes, depending on the kind of food you eat, you may sleep and you think that God is talking <laughs> to you. have you been doing that these days? Allah has not been talking to you. No, I'm saying that sometimes, depending on the kind of food you eat, you may think that no, God is I'm, talking I, to you. I, that, 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 that fact has been established. But what have you been doing these days that you are not For which reason God Allah's is not talking voice. to you? Well, Muslims believe that if God, when I, what I meant by it is that God wouldn't talk to us directly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Even among prophets, prophet Musa in mm -hmm. Islam, he could communicate with God. And even prophet Muhammad, when the Holy Prophet was taken to, to the heavens, it is believed that, you know, when we are praying, there is a particular thing that he had to realize the communication mm -hmm. between Allah and then the Holy Prophet. But we, these human beings, we are engaged in all manner of things. And I think that... Like what? Well, everybody. I mean, we all sin. Let's mm -hmm. let's let's be honest. Mm -hmm. Even though we pray and work towards avoiding yeah. sins, but these people are people that God created them with some, you know, specialities mm -hmm. that we do not. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying that if you ask me whether I would love to be a mm -hmm. president one day or not, if Allah destined it, fine. Mm -hmm. But if you ask me, I don't sit seeing myself wanting to be president. Honestly, I engage in politics. And I want to do it to the best of my ability mm -hmm. so that I can improve the lives of the people I serve. Okay. And that is why I have started with massive projects, even in opposition in my constituency. Well, All you've right. been an, uh, I mean, a minister of state, so... And yeah. I, had, I had no time <laughs> as a deputy minister of state. And I'm not corrupt. From two or the two different ministries. No, I'm not corrupt. I'm serious, I'm not. And of course, yeah. uh, we will come back and, and we will explain yes. that further. You know, <laughs> this is the Upside Down Show. Our guest this evening is the Honorable Mutala Mohammed, MP for Tamale Central. We'll return after this. <laughs>
City TV is live on DSTV. Go to channel 363. On Go TV, access City TV on channel 182. On a digital TV, please press the menu button on the remote control and run a new search on your TV. Take note that without an antenna, you cannot access City TV on your television. City TV can be accessed on a free to air digital box like the Go TV and Star Times box. City TV, it's your world. Oh, hi, dear. welcome back. This is the Upside Down Show on City TV. It's been interesting so far. I mean, the Honorable Ibrahim Murtala Mohammed. <laughs> Comrade. Yes. <laughs> is here with us. And, uh, of course, we're getting to know him behind, of course, that political figure that we get to see or hear from every day. Now we're going into your political journey itself. Yeah. I mean, from student leadership to deputy coordinator for the NYEP, NYEP. Yeah. 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 You worked under Abu Gapele? Yes, I was his deputy. So what was it like for you when he was being tried? He's one of the most outstanding personalities I've ever worked mm -hmm. on. And I remember when he was incarcerated. In fact, when he was jailed, I visited him. Okay. Mm. And when he saw me, the first thing he told me, Mutala, I should have listened to you. Mm. Honestly, he told me that. Well, what did you tell him yeah. that he should have listened to? Well, if you want to know what I told him, mm -hmm. go and read Manasseh's book on corruption. Mm. He singled me out for praises. And when he went to do his investigation, he chanced upon memos and positions that I took on some of the issues, issues pertaining yeah. there. And uh, Abu Gapele, an outstanding person. I mm. felt it, and I remember when they jailed him, I wrote something on my Facebook. It, it nearly landed me into trouble. For me, Abu Gapele's prosecution and jailing mm. is a testimony to mm. the seriousness of President Mahama in fighting corruption. Mm. Many people are unaware that Abu Gapele and President Mahama have been childhood friends. Mm. Yet President Mahama went ahead to do that. Nanado can't do that. Can, that you, can you not bring Nanado into this? <laughs> we, our taxes are managed by him. We, but we are not, yeah, but we are so, not comparing so we here. No, no, I'm saying that. CBS and Breakfast Daily no, no, doesn't talk our about taxes, that. Our taxes yeah. are managed mm. by him. Mm -hmm. Yes. I paid, we have been told now, I did Momo today. I paid. Mm. You, you pay, everybody pays. Yeah. So, but you walked so out. I'm you saying didn't stay that, to vote. You yeah, walked but, out. But I have no option than to do the momo. Mm -hmm. So I have every moral right mm -hmm. to demand responsibilities from him. And yes, therefore, you do. So, and therefore, when I raise issues about... Look, it is our responsibility collectively mm -hmm. to fight corruption. And I've mm -hmm. said, and I'll say it here. Yeah. Me, Ibrahim Murtala Mohammed, mm -hmm. I'm not corrupt. Mm -hmm. I have never been and I will never be. Mm -hmm. throughout NYAP for four years, mm -hmm. throughout Deputy Minister for Information, throughout Deputy Minister for Trade, if there is any businessman in this country mm -hmm. who has ever given me a dime, that mm -hmm. person can come up. No, you but see... they attempt? I, there was an incident, and I'll tell you... Only once? No, they didn't attempt. Maybe perhaps the position I took. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was moved from information to trade, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, we had banned rice importation, importation. into this yeah. country. Yeah. In fact, your, your journalist here, uh, what's the name? The fair guy. Umaru Sander. Sander. No, not uh. Umaru Sander. Oh, the, I was with him yesterday. Oh, Richard, Richard Mensah. Richard. 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 You can ask Richard. So when we went, the small rice importers came, they mm -hmm. petitioned for us to leave the ban. With the director in charge, before we started the meeting, I told them, I said, no one should attempt to bribe me. If you attempt, I will expose and I will ensure you are arrested. Okay. The following week, when the big writers, rice importers also came, I told them the same thing. Mm -hmm. I constituted a team mm. for them to do an independent work. And what I did was I used Kofi Capito. Oh, right. Well, He's an MPP, a known MPP, yes. Yeah. And Richard was there. There was another journalist from PCFM, a lot of journalists. Mm. They did. I, and one of our officers, I never got engaged. They went to Elubu. They went to the, did their independent work and submitted a report. Mm. It was upon the report they submitted for which reason... I came to the conclusion that we didn't need to leave the ban. Okay. So, and, and I made it very clear. Mm -hmm. So, it, maybe perhaps they won't attempt. And I'll mm -hmm. tell you one thing. Look, we all have a moral duty. And mm -hmm. I say, as a practicing Muslim, Allah says that anything that doesn't belong to you, if you take it unjustifiably, you pay for it on the day of judgment. Mm -hmm. In fact, on the day of judgment, God will ask you how you took care of your family, yeah. your kids. Mm -hmm. 
So if you are a minister mm. or an appointee or a public officer mm -hmm. and you are chopping government money mm. and thinking they are chopping it, well, you pay for it on the day of judgment. So you see, uh -huh. that is even very difficult. Uh -huh. On the day of judgment, you are taking something that belongs to over 32 million Ghanaians. Yes. Yeah. So for me, not being corrupt is not just a choice. Mm -hmm. It is a moral duty not to be. Yeah. So, and corruption so, has been the bane of, of our challenges exactly. in this so country. So with all these, I mean, with the way you are speaking, if I am your constituent, yeah. I will re-elect you over and over and over again. Yeah. Why did you lose the Nantum seat? I'll, um, I'll tell was you. It in 2016. Yeah. Na Nantong, in fact, we NDC lost the Nantong seat in 20, uh, 2008. Mm -hmm. I moved to Nantong. And the reasons why we lost Nantong had nothing to do with MPP strength. It was an NDC internal, internal politics. Yeah, but you were Tamale boy. I'm coming. So why not? Yes, my parents, I can contest in about five constituencies. Okay. Oh, okay. So when I went there uh -huh. and contested, uh -huh. I nearly lost, but I had to do a lot of work. Mm -hmm. The reasons why I the NDC lost the seat in 2008 mm -hmm. was the same reason why we lost it in 2016. Which mm -hmm. was? Because there was internal, we have four words, clear four words. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One is MDC, uh, pro NDC, mm -hmm. one is pro MPP. The Dagbang Chief Sansi also has an impact, that Buri and Dani yeah. in there. Mm -hmm. So anytime there is a little problem in one of the strongholds of NDC, you may, mm -hmm. that had nothing to do with me. It had to do with why we lost the 2008. Mm -hmm. And those who lost said that these people who are now supporting Mutala, mm -hmm. they, they campaign against us and we lost, so we oh, must yeah. also not support. I'll tell you one thing. So when I came back to Tamale, Tamale Central, yeah. what I did in Nantong, is just outstanding and the evidence is there i s built six classroom block mm -hmm. for four communities mm -hmm. i built the ghs I, I i dug dams i provided water scholarships mm -hmm. and i sent 56 people to hajj mm -hmm. the things i did in nantong mm -hmm. is just unprecedented mm -hmm. in tamale the things i did within the period of less than two years because yeah, we are just yeah. Yeah. i provided 25 mechanized boreholes. Mm -hmm. I completed a school project which was started by Honorable Inus of Sene. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have provided a clinic mm -hmm. to the Qatar charity. Mm -hmm. And then I finished the entire clinic. I commissioned it last week. Mm -hmm. Next week, I am cutting a sword for another clinic in Tamale Central. Mm -hmm. I, have went, I, I have provided scholarship, full scholarship, mm -hmm. for 10 medical science students in Tamale Central alone. Okay. I oh, wow. paid their fees full mm. and next year mm -hmm. i'm going to pay their fields fees till they finish the safe year course and I'm and I'm next year next year yes i am adding 10 other medical sciences mm -hmm. so next year the number is going to be 20. yes my first master's was in development plan mm -hmm. i have started preparing towards the payment of the ad, another 10, 10 students and the continuing students mm -hmm. 1000 2000 that is how i put the money mm -hmm. knowing very well that by next year, the number is going to be 20. Yeah. Right. So within, within the next two years, mm -hmm. I'm going to add another 10 medical science To make students. it 30. To make it that is mm -hmm. what I intend to okay. do. Yeah. Apart from the fact that I pay the school fees of this, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I organize free extra classes okay. mm -hmm. for 1,250 students. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I did that was that I had a meeting with the Metro Education Director and who indicated to me, that the performance of students in the BEC in Tamale Metro mm, was abysmal as mm. compared to the other districts. Right. And that for me was unfathomable. Yeah. Because Tamale is the capital city. Exactly. How come yeah. that the other districts? And as a trained teacher by profession, mm -hmm. I organized the free classes for them mm -hmm. for five to six months. I got the teachers, paid them. When they were going to write, I provided each student with mathematical set. And I provided each student with TNT. For the okay. four days of the exam. The uh -huh. dividend. Uh -huh. yeah. The uh -huh. dividend is yes. that. Yes. After the results came, uh -huh. I had a meeting with the Metro Health Education Director. And he told me, uh -huh. the performance this year is far better than the previous years. For mm. me, that is encouraging. Yeah. Yeah. So I am continuing with those crop of students. Mm -hmm. we, are, mm. we are going to continue SHS classes for them anytime they are at home. So that the JHS who are coming next year, when it's left with five to six months, will do the classes. I want to gather those students so that we see what the progress is going to be. Exactly. Education for me is sine qua non to mm. any success yeah, of exactly. any nation. Yeah. So how, how, it's, it's, how it's, are you funding it? I have, unknown to many people, mm -hmm. I have been a serious farmer. Okay. I have a lot of cattle, to be very okay. honest, and mm -hmm. I farm too. Well, like how many? 
I wouldn't mention that. Oh, like, <laughs> I estimate roughly. No, I, I, no because yeah. we also want to be checked. And you've said that you're exactly. not corrupt. I mean, if because you want, I want if, to help, if, if you want to monitor. If you, yeah. want, if you want to check. Because uh, you're doing a lot of projects. If you want to check, uh -huh. it's easy. I can do that. But you see, I didn't even need to mention this. I have two tractors that farm for me. Okay. okay. This year, I'm doing soya beans. I want to do it over 200 acres. Mm. Oh, and wow. the reason is simple. Why am I not doing maize? Yeah. And it's not only me. Many farmers are moving away from maize to soya beans because of fertilizer. Soya yeah. beans, you don't need fertilizer. Okay. And that for me, if okay. you don't take time, there will be serious food shortage Shorted, and crisis. Yeah. So you're a rich man. I, I had a poultry farm. Okay. It collapsed. Mm -hmm. Okay. You got no, I could no longer meat. feed. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. it collapsed. Yeah. Yeah. I could no longer feed the, the, the farm. When I was a deputy minister, maybe yeah. many people do not know. Mm -hmm. I lived at Cap Rice. Mm -hmm. You know Mexico Hotel? If yeah. On okay. this, I use that. Just be yeah. behind, boom. Yeah. yeah. I was the Secretary General of the All Africa Students Union, so I had a bungalow at Tessano for four years. When I left ASU and I became the NYP coordinator, I rented a chamber and hall room at Cap Rice. Okay. I was there for a very long time. Mm -hmm. When I was elected as MP for Nanton mm -hmm. and a Deputy Minister for Trade, mm -hmm. I lived in that chamber and hall room for two years. Mm -hmm. Why? Two years. It took the national security coordinator to mm -hmm. threaten me to live there. And throughout the four years, I never had a police officer following me anywhere. Mm -hmm. I never had a driver driving me anywhere. In fact, this government owes me money. This is you being modest? Well, I, 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 don't, try, I don't try to appear to be sent. Mm -hmm. I lived there for two years. Mm -hmm. An MP and a deputy minister and a chamber and a hall but for But nobody asked years. you to do that. Yeah. You just wanted to do it. Why? Living in a very big bungalow yeah. and there. I had the same comfort. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I never had a police officer driving a uh, follow me anywhere. You weren't bothered about your security? Well, it's Allah who can provide security for us. Some people had security, mm -hmm. they are gunned down. Mm -hmm. I never had a driver driving me. Mm -hmm. It was the responsibility of the state mm -hmm. to, provide to provide a driver for yeah. me. Yeah. I chose not to have one. Okay. So the state owes me. Well, but you chose not to That's have. what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. The state doesn't owe so the state, no, the why state doesn't the state owe, you? owe you. I'll tell you why. It is the responsibility of the. It was the responsibility of the state to do that. But, 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 but you I'm were being stubborn. You yeah, have saying to that take by choice. Security. No, I'm saying to that drive by you choice. Out of to, to drag you out <laughs> of the. If you allow me to explain. Tell us that we owe you. By choice. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. I decided not to have an official driver. Okay. Okay. That's why I haven't claimed that money. Okay. Uh -huh. But on principle. Okay. On principle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, I, I could have you. gone to claim yeah. that money, but on cho but it was my choice. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't want to have that. Let me I didn't want to have that because imagine a police officer following me, yeah. following everybody, mm -hmm. at a time and continuously. Mm -hmm. The police citizen ratio mm -hmm. is nothing to write home about. Well, true. In Tamale, I ride moto. Mm -hmm. Even when I was even a deputy now? minister. Even now. Okay. I ride when I go to Tamale, me I ride moto. Mm -hmm. They pick me on a motorbike. No, I, feel very very comfortable. I feel very comfortable. I feel very comfortable. Maybe yeah. because I'm a socialist. Well, perhaps. So, so, perhaps. so um, I'm sure when you came into politics, I mean, when mm. you became um, um, an MP, yeah. you were very, quite young, very you know? Young. Yeah. And um, you, we had some young people. I mean, from the beginning, I mentioned names, you yeah. know, the black ones, the, all these I, guys. I, I actually vetted Okujoto when he was contesting for Nook's elections. Oh, oh, interesting. I, was, I was the yeah. vetting committee chair okay. when I was in my final year. Uh -huh. I think Kujuto was honorable Kujuto was at Presec, mm. a person with whom I know very well. So when he mm. came his first year, I was a teaching assistant at the psychology department. We have come a very long way. Felix, mm. when I went to tech to do my first master's, yeah. it was honorable Omani who told me that he has so, a, yes, yeah. Omani told me he has somebody, a, a brother in in Kenya. Okay. So when I went I reached out to Felix, very sharp, intelligent guy. Yeah. And interestingly, we happened to serve under President Mahama as two deputy ministers for information. information. Yeah. Omani and I, when Omani was contesting for Nook's elections, mm -hmm. Omani, Bernard Mona, John mm -hmm. Kuma, they were all contesting for Nook's elections. In fact, in Legon, John was my very, very good friend. Mm -hmm. John and I agreed on everything mm. as far as student <laughs> struggle is concerned. Mm. But now? We contested <laughs> SRC together. Okay. Honestly. Mm. And John Kuma and I, we're, we're all in the same hall. Mm. We're all in Ligon Hall, even though originally I was a Vanda. But I didn't have a room. There, so, <laughs> so you have the Vanda script. I, I, even I, at Ligon Hall, you are I still a Vanda. I didn't have a room in, in Komoto. Oh, mm. I had a room in Ligon, in Ligon Hall. So John Kuma and I, we have come a very, very long okay. way. Mm. We're in general assembly together and mm. something like that, you know, Mm -hmm. Something was the JCR president for 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 Equafu Hall. Mm. Okay. So we're all in 
in, in, in student politics yeah. together. Yeah. So if you observed, the crop of politicians today mm -hmm. either were directly engaged in student politics. And I became the Secretary General of the All Africa Students yeah. Union for four years. Mm -hmm. And I had an office here, one in Tripoli and one in uh, Pretoria. Mm -hmm. I met Gaddafi a couple of times, so mm -hmm. it hurts me what is happening in, in, in Libya. Libya to now be we need to understand yeah. you better. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, I mean, at that age, no, when no, you entered no, 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 did you have handless? Uh -huh. Did yeah. you have a godfather? Because we're looking at your rise. Every young politics. person. And it's interesting you mentioned Inusa Fuseni because Tamale Central was well, every, that also handed over no, to you. No, every, every young mm. person in Tamale, particularly in Northern politics, Honorable Harun Edusa has been our mentor and has been my mentor for a very long time. Mm, okay. I looked up to him for a lot of inspiration mm -hmm. and he's been tutelaging, to right. be very honest. Honorable Adam Mohammed Amin, Anta. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, Anta taught me. Right. Okay. Honorable WT Harun. Energy. Yes, they all taught me. Right. Anta taught me. Honorable Harun taught me. And, and I, he, he I, was firing at ASAP. Yes, he? ASAP, yes. And the, okay. these were all <laughs> notes. notes <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I contested Honorable Inu Safsane in 2006, unknown to many people. Mm. That was when I was doing my master's at KNUST and okay. also okay. asked to Secretary General. Right. I, when Professor Waiseni left NDC and joined mm -hmm. NPP, I contested the NDC primaries. Lost to Honorable Inus of Seno, contested again with him in 2008, lost to him, mm. and then I moved to Nantong because we lost the Nantong seat. So many people do not know that I went and won the seat to the NDC mm. and then we lost it again. Ah. To be very honest with you, after I lost the Nantong seat, I intended to run again. But when we did the constituency elections, and a lot of my people won, mm -hmm. those who NDC who work against me mm. said, okay, my people have won, they would ensure we lose the seat again. So I decided not to contest mm. in Nantong again. And I decided not to contest. In fact, that was the reason why I felt that I needed to move back to academia and right. so engage in politics. Yeah. I never saw Tamale Central coming. Mm. And then when Honorable Unis have seen it, decided not he to. wasn't contesting again. Mm. And I consulted. In fact, people called me, to be very okay. honest. Mm. So I had a broad consultation. Mm. And the understanding was that I needed to come and contest. Mm. And by less will. Mm. I contested and won. You, you, you mentioned <laughs> earlier that um, you have a, a soft spot for Chairman Rawlings. Yes. Now, I now, said he, he motivated me. Yes. To join yeah. You know, at some point, at a point, um, the former president described some young people in politics as babies with sharp teeth. Yeah. Were you one of them? I don't think I was. I, one thing I maintained, I never said anything derogatory about former president mm. Rawlings. And I never said anything derogatory about any any NDC leader. I will mm -hmm. criticize. Look, I've been in this communication business for close to three decades. Mm -hmm. I don't think if I were that reckless mm -hmm. in terms of communication by now, there would have been a lot of law uh, suit yeah. court cases yeah. against mm -hmm. me. I'm very careful. Yeah. I can be very frontal. I'm not a pretentious politician. I don't say in private what I can say public. Mm -hmm. Me, that's how I am. Mm -hmm. and, and I hardly lie. I would say it as it is. Mm. And I, I, I understand that in this game politics, pretense is very important. Preten pretense is, is very important. Mm -hmm. I am not that pretentious yeah. politician. So if you do not know, people think that Honorable Mutala is this. I say it as it is. Mm. Look, when I lost the Nantong seat, mm -hmm. the first person to call me was Honorable Dr. Sibe Yebua. Oh, okay. Mark. The, the second person to mm. call me mm. was Honorable Afenyo Markins. Are they the third, very close. Okay. The third person to call me was uh, uh, Honorable Kweku oh, okay. The okay. fourth person to call me was Dr. Uh, Honorable, the, the former MP for Medina, Boniface, oh, Boniface. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it was after, in fact, the fifth more was, MPP. yes, uh -huh. more. Yeah. And these were people, they called me at very odd hours. That was around 3 a.m., 4 a.m. Right. These were people who felt my, my defeat. Mm. Everybody in Parliament knows that Afenyo is my very, very good friend, okay. even though I disagree with him mm. on many issues. Mm. But our relationship transcends politics. Mm. I don't have any... I can, if I sit on TV and on radio, I would defend what I believe in mm. yeah. with the last drop of my blood. Yeah. But beyond that, yeah. beyond the defense... Mm -hmm. Look, these medical science students, I said them, there are MPP kids. Mm. I don't discriminate, yes. honestly. Right. Beyond defending what I believe in, mm. there is life to live. How does it feel like being in a position? Comfortable. It's oh, you're sure. Possible. When I say comfortable, <laughs> comfortable in terms of communication. Okay. Because okay. you can raise the issues. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But you see, when you are in government, uh -huh. everything you say is 
measured. measured. Yeah. yeah. Because we pay them our taxes. Mm. Mm -hmm. Nobody pays his or her taxes to me. Mm -hmm. Mm. And opposition, when people say they proffer solutions, it is not the responsibility of opposition to yeah. prove mm -hmm. solutions. Yeah. The responsibility of opposition is to criticize. Mm -hmm. It is the responsibility of those in government so to look for solutions. solutions. Yeah. One other thing, sometimes it hurts you because you feel that the country is hugely mismanaged. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is corruption has taken a different level. I'm not trying to suggest that corruption is only happening under mm -hmm. this government. Yeah. I mean, President Kufo said that corruption started from Adam. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the difference between President Kufo, President Rawlings, President Mills, President Mahama, and President Nanado is that, unfortunately, President Nanado has perfected corruption. And don't take my words. Take the CDD Afro barometer. People had a lot of, you know, expectation. If I can borrow Professor Juma Buidu, when mm -hmm. they asked him about Nanado's fight for corruption, he said, it's yeah. in Tartis. Yeah. I mean, clearly, the Flagstaff House, unfortunately, has become the citadel for corruption. So, so, so what do you <laughs> think are the chances of the NDC in yeah. 2024? You know, there is a, a verse in the Quran. Uh -huh. so we call it Surah Al-Ali Imran. And Allah says that, Kulli al mulk. What does that mean? I will tell you. I want to just say there, that Kulli Allahumma Malik al-Mulk. Tu'ti al-Mulk mantasha, wa tanzi'u al-Mulk min mantasha, wa tu'izzu mantasha, wa tuzillu mantasha. Allah is getting serious. Allah says that, that he gives power or leadership to whom he likes. Okay. Mm. And he denies leadership from whom he likes. Mm. Right. Allah never said he gives you power because he likes you. He denies someone power because he, he says like no. Yeah. That even those he denies power, mm. he likes them. Yeah. Mm. He can create something good out of nothing and nothing out of out good. Of good. Yeah. No one can question mm. how he does that. So you see, the NDC was denied power. Mm -hmm. God didn't hate us. Mm -hmm. Perhaps God wanted the people to see. You see, in this country, when you speak English in a funny way, people believe you. I tell people, <laughs> I started speaking English at the SSS. Uh -huh. The SSS, I couldn't speak English. Uh -huh. mm. Honestly. Mm -hmm. Even when I wrote the SSS, I, got to say, I couldn't. Mm -hmm. So you see, if I attempt to slang... Uh -huh. No, but what has that got to do with anything? When you are yeah. faking it, people know. Uh -huh. In this country, uh -huh. I'll tell you one thing. Uh -huh. have you, I don't know whether you've... Have you ever seen me in suit? Hardly. I, I, I'm yeah. not sure. Yeah. When I wear suit, uh -huh. people mock me. <laughs> you know, because uh, well, yes. they think you look funny in a yes. suit. Yes. When I wear suit, people like Omutela is wearing suit. There's nothing wrong <laughs> with those wearing suit. Yeah. But you see, in this country, mm -hmm. just the way you dress. Yeah. Let someone who is under you wear suit and tie. Mm. You all go to one office, they give him attention. That is the nature of our society. Mm. Mm. Go there and you speak the we the Saito English we speak. <laughs> And then they come to force to slang. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They would give them attention. That is the sad aspects of it. Mm -hmm. Those criminals who came to this country under the yoke of colonialism, mm -hmm. they had no business coming to our shores. Mm -hmm. They robbed the state. Mm -hmm. People want to appear and behave like them. Mm -hmm. Why? Where from that slanging? People have lived in those countries. Those who were raised, mm -hmm. those who were raised mm -hmm. in those societies, when mm -hmm. they slang, is understandable. Yeah. Even though when you told me your age, I was flabbergasted. <laughs> 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 no, I was shocked. No, I was shocked. No, no, she, she, she's on a different. No, place. I was shocked. You yeah. see, you see, in this country, <laughs> I tell people that I me, mean, I'm not a young person. Mm. I'm not mm. youth. Mm. When you are about forty, I don't pre yeah. pretend to be youth. Mm. You live in a country, you see people for the oh, we the young people. Mm. When you are above 30, 30 years, you are out of the brackets mm. of youth. Yeah. Unemployment in this mm -hmm. country under President Mahama mm -hmm. was six point eight percent. President Nanado uh -huh. told everybody he was incompetent. Uh -huh. Today, uh -huh. unemployment by the census conducted uh -huh. by this government is 19%. Okay. And in fact, no, I'm coming. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The budget statement yeah. is 12.6%. Uh -huh. right. The dollar to the city was how much? Uh -huh. Now they're telling us that, oh, depreciation ratio. Yeah. That is not what the people are interested in. Uh -huh. What I am simply saying is that President Mama had one family member, one, uh -huh. in the person of Joyce Bauer. Uh -huh. Mind you, before Joyce Bauer was appointed as a deputy minister, Joyce had been a lawyer in practice for 18 years. Okay. You had that ethnic chauvinist, Professor Adai. They sat and said President Mahama was running family and friends government. You want me to mention the number of family and friends government? Oh, Please, right. So I'm saying that <laughs> people in this country, we were all wooden <laughs> to believe in. 
wait, that wait, Nanado wait, had wait. Wait, wait, wait. when you speak English in a funny way, people believe you. <laughs> On that English speaking note, ladies and gentlemen, um, we end it here. Thank you very much. Or even oh, though no, you no. couldn't say whether President Mahama stood a good chance to win oh, no. in the 2024 election. No, I will tell you it's one. like you're not convinced. No. In the, in the 2024 so, so do you think election. he will win 2024? Yes or is a yes or no? Inshallah, he will win 2024 election. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. I mean, when it happens, we'll come back to you. Or if it happens, and we'll come back to you. Once again, the, once again, the decency in ruling this country, the massive infrastructure development, the circle interchange, the Kasua interchange, the regional hospitals, the abandoned projects by this mm -hmm. government would come. President Mama, at least. I, I just wanted you to finish with the he will win or he will not win. <laughs> you see? You said, you, inshallah, he will win. All right. All right. All right. So thank you very, thank you very much, much, Honorable Mutala Mohammed. Comrade well, Mutala Mohammed. Oh my God. You can take the Honorable title. <laughs> <laughs> it's been an interesting yeah, conversation. Has been. This has been Upside Down. My name is Prima. And mine is Nana Tufa. So we'll see you again. Be kind to your mother. <laughs>